I'm doing something special. You got a cock crow. As an intro to this video of Hey on Why in Wales, I'm going to have my friends, Terry and Emma, give you a proper welcome to Wales. This little Welsh vlog will take you on an adventure with Welsh people, Luxembourgish and Belgian people, sheep, wild ponies, tall hills with beautiful views, and a smattering of rain, a tragic cheese disaster, and most importantly, lots of books. We start our journey to Wales with a drive through Herefordshire, with the typical slowdown of driving behind agricultural vehicles. And we had a game of chicken with this guy. I guess it's appropriate to see all this stuff on your way to hay on why. Oh, it looks like we're getting close to Wales now. Yep, we are definitely in Wales now. First clue, there are sheep everywhere. Second clue, it's raining. Before going to Hay on Y to shop for books, we decided we would go to Hay Bluff first because we heard there was a great view from the top of the hill. So we drove through all kinds of <laughs> treacherous little back roads, had quite an adventure with that. Then we got up here to what looked to be like the top of the moors and saw all the sheep wandering around on the roads and encountered some beautiful wild ponies. And then we started hiking up to the top of the bluff. Of course, we did so about 20 minutes before rain was predicted. So that was not the smartest thing we've done all day. <laughs> and Pats and I, decided that we would not walk all the way to the top of the bluff because it got really steep there toward the top. So we sat on the bench for a while and then we decided to walk back to the car. Thankfully, we had the car keys because then it started really raining. So Philip and Ian are still somewhere at the top of the bluff or hiking back down. I don't see them hiking back down. They're just getting soaking wet at the top of the bluff, apparently, right now. And we are sheltering in place in the car. We're in England right now, but we're on the very border with Wales. Wales is just maybe a quarter of a mile to the left of us. And in Wales, there's a big national park called Brecon Beacons National Park. And it's named after the beacon, which is the tallest, I'm assuming, someone correct me if I'm wrong, is the tallest um, mountain or hill in the park. And is that where they used to light the beacons on the top where you could see from beacon to beacon? Yep. And so I think that they would light Brecon Beacon and you could see uh, it from Worcestershire or Worcester Beacon. And this, I think this is Offa's Dyke Path. Either we're on it or we're about to join up with it. We're certainly close to it. Offa's Dyke was a, a boundary, basically like a wall between England and Wales that prevented the Welsh from coming into England. Kind of like Hadr Hadrian's Wall? Kind of like Hadrian's Wall, yeah. With Scotland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember ever seeing this traffic sign before. I think it's very funny and rather ambiguously alarming. What does it even mean? What the sign should have meant for us is that we were driving in the wrong direction. From the bluff, we drove 20 minutes before realizing that Hay on Wye was in the opposite direction from where we were going. Hay on Wye is often referred to as the town of books. This is because it has a disproportionately large number of secondhand bookshops for its size, making it a haven for book lovers. The influx of bookshops began in the 1960s when Richard Booth, a local resident, declared Hay on Wye an independent kingdom and himself as king. He also encouraged the establishment of bookshops, turning it into a major center for the book trade. There's our first bookshop. The Hay Festival of Literature and Arts takes place annually in late May to early June. It began in 1988 and is one of the most well-known literary festivals in the world. Well, we decided to come to Hay today and it's been not quite as planned. <laughs> uh, first, before going to Hay to shop for books, we decided to go to Hay Bluff. Then after 
driving in the wrong direction for 20 minutes, we turned around and headed in the actual direction of Hay from Hay Bluff. And we arrived in town, decided to start by eating the picnic lunch we had packed. I opened the box of sandwiches and promptly dumped them all in the gutter. So uh, then <laughs> we decided to come foraging for food and found this butcher's where we have purchased a samosa and Ian got some strange pork Baha'i and some coronation chicken. So we're trying to make the best of it. I'm used to seeing horses riding around the Cotswolds, but I wasn't expecting to see them in hay today. I haven't been to Hay on Wye in 30 years, but today I'm back here for two reasons. One, I'm looking for a Christmas gift for my son Weston, who's decided he's now into antiquarian and vintage books. And two, I'm being visited by my friend Potts from Luxembourg, and she is a bibliophile. Ha! <laughs> and she heard about Hay on Wye, and what did you hear about it? too many books to look at. <laughs> <laughs> and too many books sounded just right for you. So what are you looking for today? Some Agatha Christie books. Do you want like old or just secondhand? Secondhand. Okay. So we are looking for some treasures and um, I'm not sure when I'm publishing this. If it's before Christmas, I can't tell you what I'm looking for for Weston because then it will ruin the surprise. First bookshop I'm going to check out is the Hay Cinema Bookshop, which has about 200,000 antiquarian secondhand and remaindered books on all subjects. I don't even know what remaindered is. Here's the one pound book selection out here in the car park. I guess they just close these bins up at the end of the night and probably when it starts raining. This bookshop is huge and has a map to help you navigate the 200,000 books on offer. Okay, now we're getting to the good part where it's just books, books, and more books. And more books. And more books with an occasional magenta flower thrown in for good measure. Ian is off moving the car to the car park, so I've decided to come in this bookshop and read this book. It's actually a very cute children's book about the king's underpants. There are all kinds of books in hay. You can really find whatever you want. New books, used books, vintage books, antiquarian books. Richard Booth. That is a pretty store. Second hand and new books. I love these tiles on the outside. Oh yeah, this store is great. This is my favorite one so far in town. And it looks huge. I think this is the stairway to heaven. Book heaven, that is. Here I have Weston's Christmas present. In this really fun bookstore. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but it is really raining hard. So thankfully, we're here in these really comfy chairs, <laughs> browsing through books. Oh, Potts is looking for Agatha Christie. I'm wondering if the Murder and Mayhem bookstore might have what she's looking for. Oh, isn't this sign fabulous? Oh, and here is a here is a book passage. Books everywhere in Hay on Y. Oh, here's another one to explore. I'm still on my quest to find the perfect book for Weston. I want it to be old, but not too old and damaged and falling apart but not too new, so it's a tough one. And the title I'm looking for is very popular and very hard to find. Okay, I think I found it. Here is Weston's Christmas present. This is a restaurant, but just demonstrates how most things in Hay have a literary theme. But there are also lovely Welsh shops to explore and lots of antique shops and thrift shops. It's just a wonderful place to wander and browse 
it's a great place to hunt for treasure. But honestly, my favorite word on all these stores is oddities. That's not a word we use in the States, and I'm not sure what to expect inside that shop. But I do love the tagline for it. Every horse needs hay. Farmer's Welsh Lavender, maker of creams and balms. Scrub up with farmers. Second most popular store in hay after books is antiques. Okay, what is that? Is it for butter, biscuits? Here is the market hall, which looks like it is selling clothes today, as well as some other things. Let's go check it out. This book caught my eye because the cat on the front reminds me of my grand cat, Cleopatra. I often wonder what Cleo is thinking. She usually has a look that is reminiscent of boredom or disdain. Although in this photo, she was clearly thinking, Trent, don't go to Hawaii without me. But I've always wanted to know what she was thinking in this classic photo of her as a little kitten. I'm not familiar with any of these titles. In the States, Beano is a product you use to take the wind out of you after eating beans. But since many members of the Magenta Otter tribe are of a certain age, any of you remember these books? Now it's time to go check out the clock tower. And look what I found books. The clock tower was built in this Victorian Gothic style in the early 1880s from rubble and slate. We made one last stop just a couple minutes before closing time to this antique shop. Potts just started squealing in delight because this right here is the china she's been looking for. Oh my gosh. <laughs> all over town. Actually all over everywhere. Potts really hit the jackpot. She was able to get exactly all the pieces she wanted, and most of them were on sale for 50% off. The perfect thing to bring back to Luxembourg in her suitcase and save on shipping costs. Shepherd's ice cream and coffee bar. I wonder if it's sheep's milk ice cream with a name like that. Here is the castle in the middle of Hay on Wye. I didn't even remember there being a castle here, but unfortunately we didn't have time to go visit the castle. It closed at five and we were too busy shopping for books and antiques. Hay Castle is a Norman structure built in 1200 that was burned a few decades later and rebuilt. It had a Jacobean manor house added in the 1600s but was badly damaged by fires in the 18th century. It's now a venue for concerts and other types of entertainment events. Even if you don't love books, visiting Hay on Wye is great because there's a lot to see and do. And it's an area of great beauty along the River Wye. The river is a perfect destination for hikers and swimmers, and especially people who love to paddle a canoe or kayak. It's like the Sandlin saying goes, all's well that ends well. So even though we arrived at Hay and had a lunchtime disaster with the sandwich debacle, all has ended blissfully with Potts finding a whole bunch of the, her favorite china that she's been looking all over for. Also, I got Weston's Christmas present, so it was a successful day all around. I hope you enjoyed our heyday. Please check out one of our other Welsh adventure videos here. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.